exams are shit. They are unfair and horrible. I don't think anyone's going to disagree with me on that. And Labour wants to change that. And they want to do that by bringing back coursework, which is going to be even more shit and even more unfair. So there you go. Those are the two things I've never really done in the video before. Sworn at you. I'm sorry if everyone was highly offended or if everyone was watching this with their parents. I'm sorry. I've never really talked sworn before. I've never really talked about politics before. But there is this big debate in education at the moment um, about the future of education. And you guys aren't being included. So I'm going to include you in this debate. And I'm going to explain those two statements. So you will notice things around here have changed a little bit. I'm tidying up a little bit because according to my very, very young children, I'm infringing their human rights by not letting them have a tiny television to play computer games on. Um, so I'm now being kicked out of where I do my recording. I'm now shoved in the corner so that they can have um, a beanbag and television connected up to their switches. Anyway, that's my life. Let's talk about the point of the video. So exams are shit. They are not fair and they are not fun, and they are not a good way of assessing what you know. You come back with a set of numbers, set of letters at the end, and they do not reflect you as a person. Unfortunately, nobody has come up with anything better or fairer at the moment. Um, it's not mean they won't in the future, they might, lots of people are working on this, but exams are a shit way of assessing you. They are not fair, they are not good for your mental health, they're not good for schools, they're not good for teachers' mental health, exams are shit. I think we can all agree on that statement. Even if you like doing exams, I'm sure you'd rather not do exams and not have to spend all that time revising and stressing over a results day. And the current governments have been in power for a very long time now and I am not a massive fan. I don't like to talk politics on this channel because as some of you have suggested before, that's not what this channel is about. But I think it is important, and I'm going to put this out there, if any politician, current, former, standing, wants to come on this channel and chat with me about politics, then great, I'm all up for that. Let's really include the students in the debate about their future and in the debate about education. I think that you guys are a whole massive group that just gets ignored when it's your future that other people are deciding for you. So... I'm not a massive fan of the current government's um, education policy. There have been a lot of changes that I don't think are good for schools. There have been a lot of changes I don't think are good for students. The, the switch to linear exams I wasn't a massive fan of. Change is never good for schools or teachers or students because it just creates massive amounts of work and teachers are very, very um, busy. So I had high hopes for maybe a general election coming up soon and a different government getting in place. So I was paying attention to what the other parties were saying about education. And the Labour Party have just released a very large document, uh, like a week, a couple of weeks ago, um, which was a thought process on education by David Blunkett. He used to work in the Department of Education. And the point was this would inform Labour policy on education. Now, there were some great things in this. Bringing back short start centres, I am a massive fan of. So I had high hopes for this, and there were some really good things in there, but there were some also not good things in there. And the aim of some of these things was to make the assessment system fairer, because we've established that exams are shit, and not good, and not fair, and a rubbish way of assessing you. So what Labour has suggested, and there's only one suggestion, we're not going to everything because it's really long, is that they want to bring in a mode, multimodal form of assessment, which basically means they want to have ways of assessing you that aren't just exams. And I've been doing this for a while now, and that means coursework's coming back. Now, before you get too excited, I'm going to explain to you why coursework coming back is a shit idea. I know, I know it doesn't feel like it, um, but I have been teaching um, for a while, so I remember cool, when there was coursework. I remember uh, when I did my GCSEs way, way back then, we had coursework for maths. Um, I remember marking coursework, I remember setting coursework for science, um, for A level chemistry, and things were very different back then. When I did my GCSEs and the last time I was teaching coursework, because social media is now a massive, 
massive thing. And we saw in the last year's exams that one of the GCSE math papers got leaked and we're sure that one of the A-level chemistry papers got leaked. Things get leaked really easily these days. And I know that, I know this, this is gonna sound like really, really dodgy. When I was back teaching coursework, you could not show students the exams they were gonna sit. However, you could go through with them an example exam that maybe had a couple of words changed. So for example, if we were looking at the effect of temperature on the rate of reaction, I couldn't go through that as a mock coursework, but you could go through the rate of concentration, which is basically the same idea, just changing a couple of words here and there. And the idea that coursework is in any way going to be fair in the age of social media, in the age of YouTube, in the age of TikTok, is, I'm really sorry to be rude to the authors of the paper, but naive. And what it's going to do is increase the disadvantage gap between those that can afford to pay for tutors, those that can afford to cheat, and those that can't afford to, because, say for example, when I did my GCSE maths coursework, you were given basically a question and told to go and investigate it. And then you had to like write it up at home in a hand in your coursework. I know enough people teaching that it would not be hard for me to get my hands on all of those questions and then write videos on them. And even if I didn't do that, then loads of other people would. So you'd be able to really, really easily to go onto YouTube, to go onto any website, anywhere, and find 10 examples of how to answer your maths coursework, and it could be worth 20%. And even if you could find it or couldn't find it for free, tutors are active teachers. They have access to everything that is behind a paywall, and then they will be able to go it. And if you pay your tutor enough, they will write you an example coursework and then you need to memorise it and go and hand it in. When I was tutoring and there was maths coursework, we would sit there and do it together and I'd go, no, you need to do that, no, you need to do that. People that can afford to pay to do well on coursework will do well on coursework. People that can't afford to pay to do well on coursework won't do well on coursework. So while Labour's idea or having a multimodal form of assessment um, to get rid of the emphasis on exams and to let people that do well in class but not under special situations do better is a great idea, but in practice it's not going to work. Now in science we used to have these things called ISAs, individual skills assessments, where you would practice beforehand, you'd go into exam conditions for maybe like an hour and do the first part, so you'd write your hypothesis, you'd draw a table, things like that, um, and then you'd go and do the practical and you'd go back under exam conditions to um, write up the answers. However, teachers saw the papers beforehand and then you kind of like, so everyone show me an example hypothetical table that you've drawn. No, that's wrong, no, that's wrong, no, that's wrong, go and do it again. So by the time they went into the first exams, everyone should basically have perfect answers ready to write down. And you could see that in the um, the grade boundaries, because the grade boundaries were so, so high towards the end of coursework, towards the end of ISIS, because everybody knew exactly what to write in the exam, because you've been trained on it so many, so many, so many times. Now, some people will say that getting rid of ISAs meant that, you know, there's less practicals. The required practical introduction was supposed to replace the ISAs. But now, you don't even need to do those. You haven't needed to do those for the past couple of years. So we've now got students going into university who have potentially never done a practical at A-level or maybe even GCSE. So I get the idea of required practicals replacing the ISAs coursework because... They just became so easy to cheat at. And to the point where it wasn't even really cheating. If you just trained your students to do this well enough, they could all go in and get 100% on their coursework. And is that a really fair way of assessing it? If you've got one teacher who is really, really experienced compared to another class who has a not experienced teacher, and one teacher can train them really, really well, and the other teacher can't, is that fair? If we go back to the old way of doing ISAs, I still have my ISA playlists up where I show you how to draw every single potential type of table that might ever come up in an ISA. And it will not be hard for me to get my hands on those topic titles and then produce 
hypothetical answers for you. For A level we used to have the same kind of thing, you used to sit kind of like a mini half an hour paper on a practical that you've just done but it will not be hard for people to get their hands on those papers these days. And I don't know what the alternative is. If you're determined to go back to coursework, it either has to be something where everybody sits the same paper spread over a six month period and it will get leaked. It will get onto the internet and um, what the, the right or wrong thing to write on this is. It will not be fair. Or you go back to having completely different individual projects where every single student is investigating something completely different and they write it up as an individual project. Um, but the amount of marking that requires from teachers is insane. And teachers are working insane hours at the moment and it's not fair on teachers to do that because they are leaving the profession in droves at the moment. And if you want to force them out, bringing back marking huge essays, 35 individual projects for a class of year 11s when you might have two or three classes of year 11s plus year 13s, that will drive teachers out of the profession. Let me know if you've got any questions. Ouch! This is why in some videos I have unexplained scratches.